Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All righty. All right, all right, all right, all right. God is good. Um, um, I don't know what memo y'all got on this side because it looks like everyone is just crowded on this side. Oh, yeah. So um, if y'all don't mind the talk, because I don't want Z to be alone, you know, because it's not good for a man to be alone. And uh, sometimes a woman also needs some company. Oh, you want everyone? To, oh, come on, Josephine. Josephine is one of them people. Everyone comes to, oh, come on, come on, give it up, give it up. Woo! All righty. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she's, she's known me a long time. She knows that the next thing is I'll be calling out names. And she's like, my name is not getting called today, so I'm going to move. All righty. So if, if you, anyone else wants to volunteer to join Z on the other side, come on. I know you can do it, Chris and, and Kayla. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Barbara. Okay, that's it now before we lose everybody here. Oh, yeah, that would work. Praise God. God is good. All righty. Let us be seated very quickly. Ah, hallelujah. Let us be seated very quickly. And we're going to read from the first, from the second book of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just so thankful because, you know, sometimes we take for granted the miracles that happen amongst us. You know, it's a miracle for us to have a band that is able to be a blessing to us, even with the limited time that they get to have together. We're still praying that that will change, but even with that limited time, a lot of things still happen. Uh, technology does what it does. Sometimes we've got quite a bit of you know, rewiring and stuff going on, and these guys still make it happen. And um, even sometimes you see that, yeah, they are really you know, uh, persevering to overcome situations, but there's really never been a time that we don't get there in the end to have such an amazing time. So I just want you to appreciate these guys, especially the singers and the band. We appreciate you guys greatly. God bless you guys. Come on, God is good. All righty. And so we will very quickly look at the book of um, 2 Kings chapter 4. And um, you know what? Before we get to 2 Kings chapter 4, I want us to look at 1 Kings. The book of 1 Kings and we're going to look at the, we're going to look toward the very end of it. Um, there is an account here in 2 Kings 14 that we would look at very quickly. Now we're going to read verse 2, actually verse 1 for a little bit of context. 2 Kings chapter 14 verse 1, the Bible says, In the second year of Joash, the son of Jehoaz, almost sounds like what it means, Jehoaz, the one who has. And it says, king of Israel, Amaziah, the son of Joash, the king of Judah, became king. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Yet, I am reading 2 Kings Oh, yeah, 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 because, um, yeah, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Second Kings, because, I mean, if you had gone to First Kings, you probably would have seen that um, it's not quite the same what we're reading here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the Bible says, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like his father David. Yet not like his father David. He did everything as his father Joash had done. Now, this was a man who did exceptionally well. He was only 25 years old and he still managed to rule for almost 30 years. You know what it means to be able to reign for that long? Everybody wants to be king. Maybe not everybody. Some people are too lazy to be king because they can't be asked to do all that work. But for the most part, you have people who would kill even their own fathers to be king. And this guy, I believe the reason why his mother's name was mentioned was because she was very, very pivotal to the reign of this king because of how she reigned, how she raised him. When you look at the Chronicles of Kings, when their mothers are people who are given to wisdom, the kings do well. Look at Solomon. Solomon kept telling his son, 
I'm a great king and I'm an awesome king. I have a great relationship with God. He said, but look, you need to pay attention to the wisdom of your mother because the saying was told to me. And so they recognize that as much as you may want to follow closely a father, it may not be as close and available to be followed. But you have your mother there with you. Let her instruct your heart in righteousness. And it was something that was very common to the kings of those days. Why am I mentioning these two things? I'm mentioning these two things because I want you to see yourself in the life of this king. He lived a life that was very commendable by the standards of men. In fact, if anything at all, he did what was expected of him. He reigned just like his father. And quite often, most of us, if we do as well as the ones before us, we want to give ourselves a pat on the back. At least we maintained the legacy. Many people ruined the legacy of their families. But this guy maintained the legacy. But the Bible says, God says, eh, he still didn't do as well as my servant David. When we were praying today in worship, I sought the Lord and I said, Lord, I am asking for a gift for everyone that is in here today, such as I have tasted that has transformed my life. And you know what that gift is? Is the divine ability to be able to make music on your own. I'm not talking about being able to play multiple instruments like these guys. You don't necessarily have to play the keys or pluck the strings or spank the drum. But there is an ability that has been given to everyone by God. The Bible says make music in your heart unto the Lord. You're not about to smuggle a keyboard into your heart, are you? You're not about to go shopping and get there and say, hey, I want a guitar. Not these ones, the one that you can play in your heart. And so if there is no way for you to squeeze into your heart a physical and an external instrument, would God still be a good God if he asks you to make music unless he has given you what to make music with? So the reality of it is that every single one of us, we have the divine ability by God to make music in our hearts unto the Lord. When you look at the life of this king and several kings that were called out by God to not have done as well as David, they were usually people who did all of what was expected of them by man, but not what was expected of them by God. God expects for you to make music because God loves to be with you and the presence of God cannot be with you because we know that God inhabits the praises of his people. God was so eager to be with the children of Israel in the wilderness because he was the one who set them on that journey. But every time God shows up, they pollute the air. They always do because the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. He sees them from afar and the Bible says he rejoices over us with love and he's so eager to be in their midst and hear their stories and heal their diseases. But when he gets there, they have created the opposite of the presence of God. They keep complaining and murmuring. Many of us will feel very lonely in the face of life situations and challenges and we keep calling on God and God is like, I heard you the first time and I want to show up but you're not letting me come because I need a kind of presence to show up. And that was the reason why Jesus says, whatsoever ye ask the Father, believe that you receive and then give thanks because there are certain blessings that can only be delivered by the angels of the presence. There are angels of God that are called the angels of the presence. And when the presence of God is not present, they themselves cannot even show up. If you want the presence of God to intensify in your life, and if you want that Shekinah glory of God to distill in your immediate environment at all times, you need to learn how to cultivate the praise and the worship of His name. You see, because when you praise God, He shows up. 
Remember Paul and Silas. The very first song that I ever learned how to play on the guitar was Paul and Silas, they prayed. They prayed, they sang. They sang, the Holy Ghost came down. Paul and Silas prayed and sang and the Holy Spirit came down. You see, the presence of God is such that it is almost automated. Because when you sing his praises, there is nothing else that stops him from coming. Can I prove that to you? I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms 42. The book of Psalms chapter 42. And I want to show you something interesting about the presence of God. And so I'm going to complete the picture that was given to me in just a moment because it transformed my life. And it is not because God decided to just be that merciful to me. Yes, it is because of the mercy of God, but it is because that is who God is. Now look at what it says here in verse seven. The Bible says in Psalms 42 verse seven, that deep calls to deep. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Bible says deep calls unto deep. You know, we always quote that scripture. Whenever you're talking to somebody and they seem to be on your wavelength, they're resonating with you. They're kind of agreeing with everything that you're saying. You're like, man, deep is calling unto deep. You know, we like to use that expression. But what does it really mean for deep to call unto deep? Particularly when the Bible says, at the noise of your waterfall. You see, the Bible here is introducing us to the concept of resonance. In physics, there is a little experiment that we like to perform. It's just an exciting experiment. Many of us haven't even figured out, or many people haven't figured out how to truly use it. And we call it the tuning fork experiment. When you have a tuning fork that is, when you have two of them that have been tuned to the same frequency, you have to touch only one of them to make a sound and the other begins to make the same sound. And so if I have a tuning fork, just a little piece of metal that is sometimes just embedded in wood to dampen the sound a little bit, and I pluck one that is already of the same frequency as the other, guess what happens? The same sound that this one is making, that one also begins to make. And so basically, if I can create the atmosphere of God's presence, let me do this real quick. I think my button is really bothering my wife, but um, I don't know. I'll do it later. So deep calls to deep at the noise of your waterfall. And so basically what God has done, having made you in his image and in his likeness, has already told you the secret of accessing his power. Because whatever sound he makes, you can also make. Whatever sound God makes, you can also make because you're made in his image and in his likeness. And so when he moves, you move. But that is not even the most exciting part. The most exciting part is that when you move and you are in sync, God also moves. So you want God to move on your behalf, begin to move. You see, what the devil wants all the time is to have you weighed down in thoughts, to be deep in thoughts. David said, in silence, my bones grew weak within me. The deepest part of our physical frame is our bones. And do you know that our bone marrows have the divine ability to actually create sounds that are melodious? And so what God is saying is this, when you're silent, there is no movement, there is no sound, nothing to resonate with heaven. And so because you're silent, I am silent too. God says when you call, I will answer. Do you know that in the laboratory we call that thing call and response? When you tickle this particular tuning fork, is making a call, the other fork also responds. 
That is what it means for deep to call on the deep. But you have to be close to the waterfall. And what is that waterfall? That waterfall is the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, the Bible says, flows the river of life and it brings healing wherever it goes. So my desire for you today and that which I have asked of the Lord, which I believe he has given to me and to you is the divine ability to be able to make music in your heart unto the Lord, to be able to pluck the strings of praise because it is also the same string that is in the heart of God. Wouldn't you want to be able to pull God's heart strings? And you can. And that was the reason why there was nobody like David. The Bible says God kept saying that David was a man after my own heart because David's heart was always resonating with praises unto God. And whenever it does, guess what happens? God's heart begins to respond too. Do you know that Saul, all that time that he was getting vexed, Whenever he didn't feel the Spirit of God, he would send for David when he was still just a little lad and ask David to come and play music in the palace because he knew that whenever that little boy comes here, something happens. Do you know that one of the things that we found out later on was that the backside of the desert where David was banished to, so to speak, to look after the animals because first of all, his father was not proud of him because his father was the speaker of the house of assembly. He was the head of the Sanhedrin, which was like the Senate. And he decided to have a child with one of his servants. And when that happened, he didn't want anybody to know because in his position, there was no reason for him to do that. He could have just done the needful and taken another wife and no one was going to cut his head off. But because he didn't do what he was supposed to do, he was ashamed. And that was why David said, I was brought forth in sin, in iniquity and in sin, my mother conceived me. And so when they had David, David was not really welcome in the house. It got to the point wherein his father forgot that he existed. Remember when Samuel came to anoint the, the children, one of the sons of Jesse as king. You know the story. And they said, Jesse, bring all your sons. He brought the ones who were commissioned officers in the army because David had a couple of brothers, maybe about four of them, who were already commissioned in the army. Even his nephews were in the army and he wasn't. Remember his sister, Zeruiah. Zeruiah had sons who had risen in the army. Joab was one of them. I think he was the, he was the most senior amongst them. But David, who was strong and very agile, was not considered because being in the army at the time was such a privilege. And the men will never put David up for any kind of enrollment. He was literally not allowed to use the family name. And when Samuel came, he was like, bring your sons. He was like, I think I know the one God wants. <laughs> oh yeah, he's gotta be the one that is really tall and handsome. That's the one God wants. And when they brought that one, Samuel was like, I said, bring your sons. And he was like, what about this one? Samuel was like, I can't see nobody. Because the Bible says, God does not see as man sees. That was when Samuel had that revelation to share with people. He says, y'all are busy looking at the appearance, but God is looking at the heart. He had to rebuke me, so I rebuke y'all too. Stop bringing the ones that look like it. Bring the one that has it in him, what God is looking for. Do you know that many of us, we are always bringing the best of ideas, creative solutions to our problems, when in fact God is just asking you to bring praise for what he has already done. You keep thinking that that friend of yours is the one that's going to bail you out because you know that your friend has gone through that situation before. So I'm going to call to him. You, you think that bank or that friend of yours that has, you know sometimes you assess some people and you're like, that person has more time than they need. They can help me. They have more money than they can use. They can help me. In fact, they have more experience than they can. So you keep looking for things that look like it whereas sometimes God is just saying, I'm not seeing what you're bringing here. I want to see some praise. They forgot that David existed. And you know why? He was so far away from home. But what was discovered later on was the place where David was sent to to tend the sheep was the closest place in Israel to where the Philistines were keeping the Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to say that again very slowly. <laughs> you see, the children of Israel at the time and the Philistines were sworn enemies. They were what? Ark enemies. 
And so they put a great distance between them and the Philistines because the Philistines were giants. And you don't want to live close to a giant because it takes only a few steps to get to your doorstep. So everybody was far away from where the Philistines were. And guess what? Because they were trying to get rid of David also, they put him out so far away. It was discovered later on when people started to trace the location of the place where he was tending sheep. It was the closest place to where the Philistines had put the Ark of the Covenant. You know why? The Philistines themselves put the Ark of the Covenant away from their camp because something about that Ark of the Covenant made them uncomfortable. So if the unbelievers around you are comfortable when you're around, then something isn't right. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit has one job. He convicts the world of sin. And so if the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is not beaming enough to make people comfortable around you, if your friends can still bring out a cigarette in front of you and puffing it in your face, if your friend can still bring out a dirty image on, your, on their phone to show why you're around, then that means your light is not beaming enough. They need to know that, well, Holy Matthew is around. We cannot say what we want to say. Uh, yeah. You know, you know stuff. You see, let me tell you something. There was a time in my life that when people curse around me, they would apologize. And I was feeling cool about myself. And the Lord said to me, He says, You can do better. He says, They would say it first and say, Oh, excuse my friend. Oh, I apologize. Moses is here. He says, You need to get to a place wherein, even if they want to sweat, their mouths will not be able to close while they're around you. So they would start using the word, uh, and then they were like, You know what? Not today. We're just going to wait for this man to leave the room. You understand what I mean? And that is what we need to strive to get to because the Bible says that we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And this is my understanding from that particular insight that I gathered from a rabbi several years ago. I said, wait a minute. If David had been positioned there and the Ark of the Covenant had been positioned close, it was because God orchestrated it because he wanted some music and no one was playing it. Everybody was busy sharpening their spears. Everybody was busy polishing their arrows, thinking that by their own might, they will defeat the enemy. But David did not even get a chance to be in line to fight the enemy. So he did what he knew to do, which was to give God praise in the midst of a disadvantaged situation. Do you know that God allows for you to be in certain situations so that you can withdraw from town and go to the outskirt of town where the waterfall of God is so that your deep can call to his deep. When it comes to the power of praise, Praise has the divine ability to turn desperate situations into glorious opportunities. Praise has the divine ability by God to lift people from the basemost levels of existence to glory. Let me tell you something about the life of David that a lot of these other guys did not measure up to. David praised the Lord at all times. And you know one of the things that David even does that we all need to learn to do, he praises God even more when he's not feeling very good. Because when you praise God, it makes you feel good. You have the antidote to depression. The Bible says that anxiety is the root of all depression. And so if God has already shown to you what gives you power, the joy of the Lord is your strength, then you need not wait until you feel better before you praise. You need to praise so that you can feel better. In the times that we are going into, folks, you need to be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. Do you know that of all scripture, there was only one person that we knew not only was that said about him, we saw that he did that all the time and that was King David. He would encourage himself in the Lord. He says, one thing have I desired and that will I seek after, that I may do well in the house of the Lord, that I may behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord. And that was the reason why he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let me tell you something. I had this vision several years ago 
I was sitting in my little room. I lived in a studio at the time. And God said to me, look up. I looked up and I saw a massive throne, but in a distance, very far away. But I can tell that throne's got to be big. If I can see it from here, it's got to be a big, massive throne. And I didn't see the fullness of the one that was on it, but I saw his smile. And I was like, wait a minute, what is going on in here? And the smile became a laughter. And after a while, I joined in the laughter. I started laugh, laughing too. I was laughing quite hysterically. And I broke out into a song. And the song says, music of my mind, the expression of he, on his face, given to me by the Lord. It is the rhythm of my heart. Music of my mind, the expression on his face. You see, the expression on the face of God is there in the book of Psalms, I believe chapter 3. The Bible says the one who sits in the heavens, he laughs. God always has a smile on his face. I mean, why wouldn't he? Can you think about anything that's going to make God feel frustrated except for you? Oh, come on now, let's go there. Because you know, the Bible says that the stars of the heavens, they would not deviate from the path that God has set for them. And so will they be all the days of their reign. The stars in heaven, they do not deviate. The only stars that deviated, the Bible says, from the day that the Lord spoke and they did not come follow his command, they were separated into outer darkness. They were not part of his creation. They were excluded. But everything that is part of his creation responds to him. Even the earth, the Bible says, Oh earth, earth, hear ye the voice of the Lord. The earth responds to God. Everything responds to him except for his children. And I can relate with that because when I was growing up, the people who worked for my dad, whatever he told them to do, they did. But me on the other hand, he had to beg sometimes. Because sometimes when he got angry, I got angry too. And my mom would say, aren't you going to do anything? And he would say, well, he's doing just like me. My dad was logical like that. He would realize that, wait a minute, he's doing what I do. He could see himself in me all the time. And so sometimes he just walks away. He would, he would walk away. There was one day at school, uh, my friends were talking about how their dad would discipline them. And I'm like, oh my God, I must be such a good boy. I must be such a good boy because up until that time I told them I said my dad has spanked me only once before this is not America I grew up in Nigeria everybody gets a hiding every day that was the automatic reset button sometimes your, fo your parents will smack you and then you wonder why and they're just like I just felt like you're about to do something silly I'm like why don't you just wait until we do it they said no I can't afford for you to do it. I just feel like you're about to do something silly. So they invest a slap in you so that they don't have to manage a loss of discretion afterwards. I saw a comedy skit the other day. It was a bit of an exaggeration, but I'm like, I can relate with that. The guys, he had like three boys and they said to their dad after school that they were going to play soccer in the neighborhood. And he said to them, come. The first one, he slapped him. The second one, he slapped him. The third one, he slapped him. And they were like, dad, why? He said, I just know somehow you will disgrace me where you're going. And I will not be there to behold it. I know that was a bit of an exaggeration. I said, but I can relate because some of our parents back then, they had such rationale. And so when my friends were talking about all their dealings, I said, I said there was only one time that my dad had given me a, 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 a hiding. What do people call it there? Do people call it spanking or whooping? Yeah, I know, a whooping or whooping, whichever one, a whooping. Which one is it? Let's stick with spanking for now. And then, I said I was, I was just a little toddler. He wanted to drink from his cup because in African homes, the dads had their own cups. You just don't wake up one day and you say you want to drink from your dad's cup. What have you done in life to earn such a privilege? Who have you ever fed? What have you ever done? And you just wake up one day and it's usually the biggest cup in the house. It was the biggest cup. My dad's plate was like a tray. 
No, no, I'm not kidding you. His plate, I couldn't take his plate from the dining to the kitchen until I was strong enough because they were usually big plates. So you know that that is daddy. And you know the reason why they would do that? We found out as we grew older. You know, by the time you become like 16, 17, he would be the one to offer you a drink in his own company. You're like, I can drink from you. I was like, come on, don't be silly. Drink it. But when I tried before, you said I was being silly for trying. But the reason why they did that was because they wanted to instill in you such a fear such that they don't have to report you to anybody outside of that home. They were the authority. In fact, people scared you at school by telling you they will report you to your parents. And what do we see now? People say they will report you to your teacher or they will report you to the police and then you become afraid. No, what we knew was that it was you, you, you were doomed the moment somebody said they were going to report you to your dad. Which I think we need, to, we need to borrow that everywhere in the world. You know why? The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty God. God wants you to be afraid of falling into His hands and not fall into the hands of the enemy. But many of us would trivialize God, but we're so afraid of Satan. <laughs> you see, many people are so afraid of Satan, but when it comes to God, we're like, God, you be all right. I'll, re I'll read that book of the Bible. Which one did you ask me to read again? I'll read it tomorrow. But then when they're going out of the house from their, from their little garage to Kroger across the street, they sit in the car and they be praying, Father, I bind every accident. I bind every evil eye. And you're so conscious of the evil eye and the devil and your heavenly Father who loves you so much you don't even regard him. And the devil is not looking for your fellowship. He was only looking for your worship. But God already has your worship because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. But he is seeking your fellowship and you're denying him. Let me go back to this story of David. Because I tell you what, when we understand the principle of deep calling to deep, when we understand what it does to God when we begin to praise him, when you put a smile on your face, you begin to look more like your God, like your father, because he has a smile on his face. That's what the Bible says. He who sits in the heavens laughs. I think someone is wondering, is that really in the Bible? Can we read it together? I believe it's in the Bible because I've seen it before. All right, we may have to ask Rosemary to help us find it because it's not here. Maybe, I've, maybe I'm in the wrong book again. It says here in Psalms chapter 2, verse 4, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The one who sits in the heavens, what does he do? He laughs. And so if your heavenly father has a smile, a radiant, confident smile on his face, because all things are subject to him, then why don't you? Just do the same because he says that you are in Christ Jesus seated at his right hand. You are far above principalities and powers. And so for crying out loud, if anybody should praise God, I think it needs to be you and I all the time. Now watch the change that, you're, that you are about to experience in your daily lives. Daily lives. I want to say this and I want to um, give a preamble to what I'm about to say to help your faith. The last couple of weeks that we've been coming here, especially the last two weeks, I've been asking God to give to us things and he's been giving to us things. Imagine what's going to happen if you two would always also ask God for things. You see, sometimes we think we're asking God, but we're not. Let's quickly correct that notion. I've, I've taught around this subject before, but I haven't mentioned it in a while. Many of us, we think that we are asking God for things dear, but what we're doing is we're telling God what we don't have instead of asking for what we need. So many people go to God and say, God, oh, look at me. I don't have a husband. And God is like, uh, I know. Because I've seen your pillow lately. I see how tightly you squeeze it. And if you, that God knows so well, the Bible says he knows the number of hair strands on your head. 
So you think you will have a husband and God would not know? You think you're just going to show up at church one day, married, and God is going to be like, is that Josephine or, or Jane? Did she got married? Where was I? I mean, think about it. That's not about to happen to God. God is not about to be surprised by your blessings because he gives those blessings. The Bible says there is nothing anyone has that he has not received from above. And you know what? Even if you choose to go and receive the husband that God has not given, God will also know about it because Satan will boast about it. Satan will be like, oh, have you seen your daughter lately? <laughs> she claims to have a man now, but not the one you gave. So either way, God is going to know about it because Satan considers himself interested in your affairs for some reason. You know, when God asked him, what have you been up to? He says, I've just been, you know, going to and fro upon the earth. He said, I didn't touch nothing. I'm just observing. You see what I mean? But he would report. So either way, God will know what you have been up to. He knows all things. And so you don't have to go to God to report what you are missing. The Bible never said, go complain to your heavenly father what things you do not have and he will have mercy on you and then just give it to you anyway. No, the Bible says ask. Even though you know, the Bible says even though you know that he already knows what you have need of before you ask. Jesus said that. He says he knows what you have need of before you ask. Somebody else would have said, well, so you don't need to ask. No, Jesus says before you ask. That means you still need to ask so that you can receive. And so you need to do an assessment of your life and see, let me tell you something, some, I've known this thing for a long time. Since the spring of 87, I've known this thing, but even sometimes I fail to practice it. Not that long ago, I was complaining to God about certain things that were absent in my life. And God was like, wow, tell me something that I don't know. And that was when he hit me. I said, okay, I'm sorry. But it didn't happen that immediately. You know what he said to me? He said, I want you to go and study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I almost wanted to say to God, what part of that do you want to know? I tell you right here. But because he said to me to go study, it, I knew that I was slacking. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. And then as soon as I opened it and I started studying, I started to see the things that I was missing. I was seeing them in the life and in the ministry of Jesus. And he said to me, he says, what did Jesus tell you? I said, he told me to ask. He says, okay, I'm here and I am listening. He says, ask of me and I will give you. He said, even I will give some people ransom for you if you want. That was what God said. He says, I am prepared to give many a ransom for you. That is how committed I am to giving to you whatever you ask. Just stop telling me what you don't have. I don't need to hear that from you. What I want to hear from you is the confidence that you have in me that I can give what you ask. I'm going to say it again slowly because let me tell you something. Sometimes we need to hear ourselves pray. We need to do an assessment for many years in this country, I was an auditor. I worked as an auditor and I, audit, I audited senior IT people. And the reason why was because the word got out that I was not afraid to ask people questions. And so there was always a wait list of people waiting for me to come and audit them. Some of those audits were only two days. There was one that I had once before. They were all senior executives. There were about eight of them at the beginning of the meeting. By the afternoon session, I was down to three or two. And so I asked if the other guys would join us after lunch. One of the guys in the room said, they're not coming. I said, why? He said, well, let's just say they are unprepared for the questions you are asking. Yours truly was speaking to only one person over the phone the next day. You see, because people aren't used to being asked the right questions. You see, one, one of the things that made me really successful in that career was I would ask people questions about the things they just told me they were doing well at. Just so that I can help them understand how well they are really doing. And quite often, it wasn't as well as they thought. 
but they know that stuff better than me. The only reason why I am helping them to get better is because I'm asking them questions they don't ask themselves. How many times do you ask yourself, how well am I praying? Some of us just pat ourselves on the back, the fact that we even pray at all. Because you pray and you feel like, yes, I have just prayed about my financial situation. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, over to you now. Before I open that door, send the money. And God is like, which money? You didn't ask for no money. You came here to complain for not having money. And we all sat here and after a while, we're just like, we can't do this because we only inhabit praises here. Guys, let's go. You see what I mean? But we do that all the time. If you would just go back over some of the prayers that you've been saying, you would do yourself a great favor. You would thank yourself. You buy yourself a little shirt or dress, whatever, just to thank yourself afterwards to say, wow, this is what I've been doing to myself. I've been complaining rather than asking. I'm not saying everybody does that, but everybody does that every now and again. You understand what I mean? And so the praise concept particularly when God is revealing to you now that in this place, in the last couple of meetings, we have been getting whatever we ask for. One of those meetings, I said, Lord, the healing would be just fine because there is healing in your presence. And we prayed for healings and people got healed immediately. Praise the Lord. Yeah, God is good. Can I share your testimony, Cody? Or do you want to share it yourself? Oh man, you love me. You see, the people who love me, they know that I love sharing other people's testimonies. I could almost make a career out of it if you let me. I can just call it testimonysharingministry.com. It gives me great joy, you know? Anyway, so not only did people get healed in here, Cody went and prayed for his mom in the hospital and she received such a transformation in her situation. Praise the Lord. God is good. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Because, let me tell you something. And he said, he said, you know that I had never really done that? Oh yes, because we are all like Cody. There are so many things that God has been expecting us to do for such a long time, but we never really do it. Simply because we just didn't think we should. But what you should do about your situation is look at the things that are missing and go to God and say, God, you said that you have already given to me everything that pertains to life and godliness. So this one here, I call it forth because you have already given it to me. Let it be. God did not come at the beginning and just say, oh, look at the darkness. The darkness, can you please go away? No, God had no business with the darkness. He says, light come. Because the moment light comes, darkness would have to excuse the situation. You understand what I mean? God was calling forth the things that he wanted to see. There was no time that God says, oh, look at all the field that I made. No one's gonna eat the grass. I'm so sad. No, after he made the grass, he said, let there be every beast of the field that would chew up the grass and put some more manure in it so that the, cycle, the circle of life never ends. He called forth the things that he wanted to see. Do you know how transformational it is for you to adopt the same principle of only calling forth the things that you want to see? You know, I gave you this analogy a while ago. I'm going to give it to you again because I like it. If I said to Shayla, Shayla, don't think of a white elephant. That's exactly what she's thinking about. I, I can predict that. You don't even need to be called by God to predict that. Because of the fact that the human mind does not know negativity, it just knows substance. So when you say, don't think of a white elephant, she thinks of a white elephant. And so if I don't want her to think of a white elephant, I would say, hey, can you think about a red rabbit? Something very far away from an elephant. Do you know that pilots, when they're being trained and they're being instructed to avoid objects, they don't tell them to avoid objects, they tell them to approach space. If you're flying and your instructor knows that if you continue on that particular trajectory, you would hit a mountain, he doesn't say to you, don't hit that mountain, because they say that more often than not, 
people go straight for that mountain because the last thing they heard and the last thing they can see in their mind is the mountain and you gravitate toward that which is on the inside of you where like cameras we print that which is on the inside of us and if it's a negative it comes out even brighter sometimes pun intended and so what do they tell them they tell them do you want to go toward that open space between those two clouds they, do, they speak what they want to see as opposed to what they want to avoid. So stop praying against diseases. Stop praying for health. Stop praying against being broke. Don't even use the word broke. Say, God, can't you see how broke I am and I am your child? Oh, how can I be proud that you're my daddy? You see what I mean? And God is like, the things that come out of your mouth are the things that you give life to. You heard Alan say it. My wife said it too. There is nothing made that was made without the word. So let your word work for you. And so the Lord said to me, a couple of weeks before healing started happening in this place and even getting exported, what did the Lord say to me? He said to me, say what you want to say, what you want to see. And I laid my hands on my head and I said, I will pray for the sick and they shall recover. And I've been declaring that amongst other things since the Lord brought me that reminder word. And so let us not just know these things, let us live these things. Now what I have just described to you is the principle of praise. We praise God for what he has done. We praise God for who he is. We praise God for what we believe he is able to do. And so if you would live a life of praise, God will always deliver in your life. Because every time you say, Father, well, thank you because I know that I have more than enough. Guess what happens? He shows up because his name is the one that makes more than enough happen. That was one of the things God said about himself. He says, I will do exceedingly, abundantly above what you ask or think. God is saying, I am the doer of abundance. And so when you are thanking him for abundance, your deep calls to his deep. And guess what? The noise of the waterfall of blessing comes rushing in. I would love for you to receive this gift that the Lord is giving out today. A fresh stirring up of the divine ability within you to make music in your heart unto God. We're going to break bread in a moment, but before we break bread, I want to share with you just one more testimony. You see, there was a time in my life wherein I was going through some of the most challenging times that I had ever gone through. And it was enough to weigh me down. It weighed me down so much so that I actually contemplated taking my own life. I even attempted to, and I've told you all the story. And just before I made the knot on the rope with which to end it all, I got a phone call. And when the phone was ringing, this was before mobile phones, it was the house phone. And you know, it had no caller ID, so you didn't know who was calling. And so I heard the phone was ringing and a part of me wanted to pick up the phone, but then the enemy was like, so what's the point? Are you picking up the phone so that you can make a plan to meet up with somebody? I said, well, maybe, maybe if it's for somebody else, I can take a message. And, this, and the voice also said, which I know is the voice of the enemy. I got to know later was the thank you, Cody, the voice of the enemy. He said, and so you take the message with you? He said, there's no point. Just do your business. Do what you want to do before everybody knows how much you're struggling. Save them the embarrassment. Check out before it becomes known that you're struggling academically. I was struggling academically and it was such a burden on me because I had always been seen as a bright student. And I didn't tell anybody that I had a little plan. I chose the university that I went to because they were always having issues. And so I chose that university because it'll give me an excuse to do what I wanted to do and eventually drop out. But I didn't tell anybody else my plan because I just couldn't imagine that my dad, I couldn't see my dad taking it well. If I said to him, you see that university that you're so proud that I'm going to, I'm only going there to drop out, woo -hoo. And so because I could not anticipate any glorious um, reception, I kept it to myself. And when you keep things to yourself, guess what happens? It's like carrying the weight of the whole world. Nobody, none of us was made to carry things all by ourselves. 
when Jesus' burden was getting too heavy, what did he say? He called his disciples. He was like, why, why don't you watch with me for a little? He didn't say pray for yourself. He has already prayed for them. He says, but come and help me out here. Come and watch with me for a little. And that was because the sins of the world were getting deposited on him at that time because the Lord knew he was ready to go to the cross. And so they saved everything for that particular moment. Started loading all the sins, all the evil things people had done. All the stuff that had been bothering the father because the Bible says he's too holy to behold sin. He was like, well, since you volunteered, Mr. Lamb of God, here you go. The sin of Adam and that of Eve and that of Esau. Oh my goodness, that of Cain, all of it, all of it. And they were piling it and it was beginning to weigh him down. He called for someone to share it with. I didn't share with anybody. I was just keeping everything to myself. And guess what happened? It became such a burden. And I thought it was going to be easier for my parents to just say that I was no more than for them to have to explain the reason why their so-called Mr. Bright son scholarship from day one and all that stuff is now dropping out of school. And I couldn't even tell them all of the stuff that I wanted to do because the stuff I wanted to do did not exist. And so if someone is telling you they want to do stuff that didn't exist, they would look completely crazy and not get your support. Because what future God was showing me had not yet been forged. Eventually, when I went to school and got a degree, I got a degree, a master's degree in information security that did not even exist. At this time that I was planning to drop out, no one had ever done it. But those were the things that I was seeing and I was looking for stuff close to the future that God was showing me in my prayer closet. Do you know that there are times wherein one of the biggest problems we have is the lack of understanding of how to manage the privileges that we have in God? Because it's your privileges in God that has put you in the situation where you're at wherein the devil just can't seem to leave you alone because God has given you stuff that the kingdom of, the, of darkness can use. If you have nothing, they're not going to bother with you. Oh, they're not going to bother with you. Have you ever seen thieves make a plan like the Ocean's Eleven just to rob a McDonald's? No. They, they make such plans to rob places where they can cut away with a couple of millions or maybe hundreds of millions. And so the enemy will come after you because God has given you so much privilege. But if we don't know how to manage the privileges that God has given to us, the enemy will tell us that those things are a disadvantage. The enemy convinced me that I would have been better off if my grades had never been really that good. If I had been just an average student and now, you know, you know, people who are not very bright is expected of them to just flunk out. I mean, but you, huh, it's going to be terrible. You'll be a big shame. He helped to paint that picture. And guess what happened when the phone rang? By the Holy Spirit's help, I said, I just want to pick up a phone one more time. And I went to the phone and it was my friend Lala that was on the phone. And she said to me, she was like, oh Moses, I just got on the phone to Tony and we spent about 40 minutes just talking about how much of a blessing you have been to us. So at first I was like, I was taken aback. And I was like, okay, keep going. <laughs> because if there's any time that I needed to hear that, it was that particular moment. And she went on and on. She was saying things that the Holy Spirit had led me to do that I did not even know made an impact on anybody. I was just being myself on campus. I was just writing. I was just writing. I wrote for a school magazine. I would just write thoughts that God put in my heart. I would just write things and send it off and they'll print them some I'd never even get to see. But apparently it was touching lives. It was blessing people. Do you know that there was one day they had had a big argument and they wanted to bring the argument to my house and they came to the window of my little studio where I was and they heard me praying and each one of them started to talk amongst themselves to see who can identify what languages I was speaking in. Because one of them was like, this guy is speaking in several languages at the same time. That one sounds like French. Oh, that one sounds like this. That one sounds like that. And the argument resolved. They became happy and friendly. And by the time I was done praying, they all came in together. I did not even know until later on when they told me. And so when this lady was on the phone and she was saying this and saying that, by the time the Holy Spirit got my attention through what she was saying, she just suddenly said, oh, gotta go. My mom is calling me. And she hung up the phone. She wouldn't even let me say a word. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, look at how many things you could have been thankful for, but you chose to focus on the things that have been a burden to you. That was the very first time that I had 
or maybe I should say that was the deepest understanding of this scripture where the Bible says he has given you the spirit, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know something about the garment of praise? It's so light, it cannot stay on your body. Remember when David was praying, the Bible says he got rid of his garment. The garment of praise is just there as a symbol. It's so light, it cannot even stay on your body. And that will replace the spirit of heaviness. I had made myself heavy because I wasn't praising God for the things that were working. I focused too much on the things that weren't. When I listened to the rendition of all of what she said, Tony was saying, and the ones that she was saying, and she was calling out people's names, and she even said something. She was like, we haven't even ever seen or heard of anybody on our campus that can tell somebody the dream that they had and also interpret it. And when she said that, it occurred to me that that had happened to me just a few weeks prior. And still, I wanted to take my own life. Let me tell you something. From that moment onward, onward, I became a praiser. My situation did not immediately change, but my attitude changed. When I got back on campus, I wrote an article. And in the middle of the article, I wrote, an attitude of gratitude will take you to an altitude of the attitudes. And that was how I became known on campus. People in pockets here and there had known about me, had read some of my things, but that was the one that made people stop me on campus and said, that's the Moses, that's the Moses. I enjoyed that frame for like two years before eventually God kicked me out of that university. Oh, I'm telling you, I became famous just for that. People would recite it when they saw me, Mr. Attitude, Mr. B. Attitude. They called me all kinds of dudes. But let me tell you something. It worked for me in ways that I could not even imagine. The place where I was staying, they wanted to get rid of me because the pastor was leaving to another church. And I was staying in his, what we called it, BQ, but you would call it like an in-law suite that had been made into a studio. But guess what? He couldn't get rid of me simply because he said for as long as he was in that house, he could use a little bit of lifting. I didn't know that. He never came to knock my door to tell me. I heard him say that one day when he was preaching. I visited their church and he was saying it. He said the times that he had struggled the most, God would send me to come into my studio and start singing. So my praise was not only lifting me, it was lifting another. So I want to encourage you to develop that skill of plucking the instrument of the praise of your heart and you will always get God to move. Begin to move in praise and he will move in power. Begin to move in gratitude and he will move in his strength. If you would just be full of thanksgiving, let me tell you something, all your requests will be made known to God. That's what the Bible says. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Because when, you're, when you include thanksgiving, you get God's attention. So if you want your request to be known to God, don't complain about what you don't have. Give thanks for what you believe you will receive and it will happen. So as we break bread today, I want us to go and read that famous Matthew chapter 7. That famous Matthew chapter 7. Well, Matthew's still in the New Testament. Where was I going? Matthew 7, and look at what it says. It says here, in verse 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Folks, these are three things that God does all the time. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door knocking. When we were lost in the world and in sin, he came to seek us out. And when he found us, he asked if we would come to him. You see, when you do these three things, it puts you back in frequency with God. You are back in resonance with your heavenly father. Your life will begin to look like heaven, even in the midst of whatever chaos you find yourself. Let the breaking of bread today be a renewal of your commitment to the heart of praise. Start by saying, Father, I thank you for allowing me to be here today. 
thank you for leading me this way. Say, Father, thank you because you knew that I wasn't going to come, but somehow you made it happen and I am here so that I no longer have to wait for someone to raise praise before I feel glad. I will not be a praise raiser myself. In the bathroom behind the steering wheel, I'm going to be a praise raiser. After someone's yelled at me and told me off, I will give praise. Even when I can't seem to figure out how to do it, I will thank you because I know you have done it. Lord, from here onwards, I will be a praiser. So thank you for this instrument of praise that is in in my heart that you have put in my heart in a place that I myself can couldn't have reached so that I can always make music in my heart unto you oh God father in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you because this divine ability will begin to manifest itself in the form of unfettered praise praise that has no hold on it it will begin to manifest itself in the form of laughter in the midst of difficulty it will begin to manifest itself in the form of thanksgiving for things that I have asked for that I may not have seen in my bank account I will just thank you anyway because by so doing I am resonating with your heart and I am getting you to move Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let this be the beginning of the rest of our lives, a life of praise and thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. So let us receive the bread as the Lord's body and the wine as his blood. Let us do so in remembrance of him. Let us do so calling to remembrance everything that, within, that is within us and all things that are around us because this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. You may eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood in remembrance of him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you need healing in your body, this is the time for you to just press in in this atmosphere where the Father has already been magnified. The Lord's been lifted up in this place and the presence of God here is not minute. The presence of God here is tangible and the presence of God that is here is the presence of God that is with power. And so whatever infirmity that is in your body, I want you first of all to lay your hand on yourself and say the word of the Lord concerning me is that I will lay my hand on the sick and they shall recover. It doesn't matter if you have prayed before and felt like nothing was happening. Someone may have even prayed for you and you may feel like the healing is still pending. Right now, lay your hand on you again. And as soon as you are led to come forth, then you may come forward. I would love to pray for you as well. I would love to lay my hands on you because by the laying on of hands, there is the stirring up of the gift. I heard it, that is there anyone amongst you who is sick? The Bible says, let him pray. And not just pray, but let him sing psalms and make melody unto the Lord. Sing psalms and make melody unto the Lord. Tell him, the Lord is the glory and the lifter of my head. The healer and lover of my soul. Sing and make music in your heart unto the Lord because the Lord is your healer. I'm going to come to you and once I come to you, I'll put the mic away so you can tell me what it is so that I can speak to it in the name of God. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for these areas that have been mentioned. As I place my hand upon them, Lord, let your healing power flow through this woman's body. She believes, now let her receive in the mighty name of Jesus. She believes and she will receive in the name of Jesus. Brother Greg. Father, I thank you because you have already done it. Your son needs to receive it in fullness right this moment. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, let it drop. Let it drop. Yes, let it drop this very moment, Lord. Let it drop. Yes, yes, let it drop. Let it drop in the mighty name of Jesus and bother him no more. In the name of Jesus, it will bother you no more. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this woman right here. 
she's been here once to testify and Lord it is only the beginning of many more testimonies not just in her life but in the lives of others because your kind will beget in others be sure of that says the Lord now tell me now this sinuses thing is something that gets you whenever the weather changes I tell you father in the mighty name of Jesus I tell you woman of God it doesn't have to and I want you to agree with these words today it will not bother you anymore no matter what season comes no matter what season goes it will bother you no more because the Lord's will for you is that you be in health and prosperous that you will be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers so I speak to your sinuses be clear in the mighty name of Jesus any other infirmity and the Lord says to me that which has been considered long-standing that has been considered terminal is not being terminated in the mighty name of Jesus woman you are healed thank you Lord Jesus you came forth to ask on the day that the Lord says ask and it is yours for it says ask and you shall receive begin to give God thanks for it because you're not going back to the medications of men because the heaven has given you salvation the Lord has given you his salvation in the mighty name of Jesus find the flame of your healing with multiple praise in Jesus name father we thank you woman of God father in the mighty name of Jesus Lord let that heaviness be reduced to nothing because your daughter is your righteousness she's made your righteousness not by the things that she does right but by what Jesus did right and Lord that which may have been concluded upon to be a disadvantage to be a thing of regret Lord let it be turned around to be a thing of praise let your daughter see your glory over this situation in the mighty name of Jesus woman your heart hear me let go and let God reveal to you glory concerning this matter in the mighty name of Jesus the Lord is doing the transformative work in your heart let me tell you something others will come and confess to you that they have entertained the same thing in their heart and you will rebuke it by speaking just one word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Brother Matthew. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Brother Matthew, you have asked. By the name of Jesus, be open. Father, we give you praise. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. That is a word for you, Alan. It is by his stripes that you have been healed. It is not by anything else. It is by his stripes. So there's nothing that you need to do more of. There's nothing that you're not doing enough of because it is not by your own ability it is by his stripes so i speak forth to your heart today because i know as the lord has revealed to me that your heart is receptive to instruction hear me now believe in what the lord has done only believe take on no further burden of responsibility just believe that by his stripes you are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. It is by his stripes. And that will be revealed to you deeply that you may be set free by that understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have become a warrior before the Lord. Continuing to seek to have a testimony. And Tia, not only will you have a testimony, the Lord says you will have a ministry of healing. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you because this sign that is forging in her life. And so those spirits that have come to take advantage of the thoughts and the pain and the discomfort and even some of the words that have been spoken, I declare you gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit that has associated itself with this situation, hear me now. In the name of the Lord, I declare your exit. Go in the mighty name of Jesus. Go in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this woman be filled with the wind from God's presence, even the holy wind of God. And it brings healing wherever it goes. That river, give him praise. That river, give him praise. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I hear that it is a testimony, like a ring that has been forged. Lord, you also promised that you will quicken our steps unto righteousness. Let her step be quickened in the area of this healing that she may get there to the place of wholeness quickly in the mighty name of Jesus and speedily. Father, I thank you because that which is being done, yes, let it be revealed to her. Let the scroll be completely revealed to her that she may see all that she needs to see, that she may know all that she needs to know so that her words will be as powerful as the needs that she has, that she may have it all met in Jesus' name. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you because the angels that have been assigned, whatever is getting in the way of the fulfillment of their assignment, Lord, let the incense burn to create the ambience that is needed for the fulfillment of this work. There is a lot that I, I'm seeing now because there is a lot that God is dealing with. You came for one thing, but you are going with many of God's blessings, many answers, many solutions, even right now in your heart. They will begin to unfold. The next time you ask the same questions that you've been asking, you will find the answers that God is depositing in your heart this very moment. I see answers. I see things being revealed to you this very moment. You don't even know the fullness of those things. But the next time those questions come, the answers will be there, already waiting in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because of how well this has been used to bring your daughter closer. This situation has brought you even closer. But the Lord is here to receive you. Keep drawing closer and closer. And I say that the Lord commends you unto his grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep drawing closer, Tia. Keep drawing closer. Keep drawing closer. Keep drawing closer. Because the Lord sees your heart and he will reward your persistence. He will reward your pursuit in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Barbara. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know one of the things that I have seen in the past as a, an exercise of faith is to dip oneself in the water. Whatever you have that you can fill up with water, if it's a jacuzzi, a bathtub, fill it with water and declare the promises of God into that water. And I tell you what, in the mighty name of Jesus, as you do so, every numbness will loosen in the mighty name of Jesus. And you will have the life of God saturate your entire being. I deliver this word to you from the Lord and it will bring you all the healing that you need in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as a help to her faith, let her feel your healing power upon her right this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus, experience the waterfall of his grace in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus because the time is now. The time is now. That which has plagued your daughter and taken away her comfort, the time is now for it to be done away with. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak for there to be a release of the balm of Gilead, the healing ointment over your daughter. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, peace comes. Divine soothing comes. Divine restoration comes to your flesh. 
the same power that restored the flesh of Naaman the leper, that made his skin be described as that of a baby once again. Let that same power come over you right now because it's a power that recognizes the voice of the prophet. And that voice of the prophet is here today. And that power recognizes it. And so I commend you to the grace of God also. Let that power work on you, in you, in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's also going to work through you. I declare your peace and your whole body will experience restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed completely. Your word, O oh God, says affliction will not arise a second time. This woman has testified. And so, Lord, because of that, I declare that this affliction will be gone, never to arise again, in Jesus' name. Even the thoughts and the memory of the discomfort are being erased right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Your mind has been renewed unto righteousness and wholeness, and so is your flesh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Already. God is good. Father, we thank you. Let us just give him praise. Let's sing praises in our hearts to the Lord. God is good. The Lord said to me, we're in that season, call her and declare her healing over her. And just tell her that this is not about where you are in your head space or in your body space. This is where the Lord is in his mercy to deliver you and declare the mercy of God upon her. As I declare over you today in the mighty name of Jesus, the healing power of God in the mighty name of Jesus, you will be a successful carrier of that power of God and you will deliver it to the praise of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We well, thank you. Why don't you just bless him and just thank him and I want you to thank him also, praise God, that you will lay your hand on the sick and they shall recover. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. God is so good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> You don't want to miss. Yes. Oh, come on. Testimonies already. Praise God. I had been going to doctors because my uh, all kinds of diagnoses were at restricted breathing. And I no longer have uh, the proper medical insurance to pay for another procedure. But out of faith, you know, the Holy Spirit led me to say, by his stripes I'm healed, Pastor, please agree with me. And then he put his hand on my lungs, on my chest, so he sensed that something needed to be opened up. And he prayed, and when he said opened up, and now I'm breathing perfectly normal. <laughs> Woo! Uh, praise God, praise God. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm telling y'all, these ain't the meetings you want to miss. It's not. I'm going to tell y'all something. We, we got to put premium on the fellowship. You know how we used to, I speak for myself, get off work early so you can make it to happy hour. You want to be on time there. I, I'm, I'm keeping it real with y'all. That same premium we put on the fellowship there, we got to put it here. You see, because it's already been declared over us, watch this, that the Lord is giving us a glimpse into the goodie bag. Okay, what he has for us, the joy that he set before us. So we give God praise for what he's doing. And I want to help us with this. Oh, do we have another testimony? Oh, come on, somebody. It's another testimony here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I think about the goodness of God and what he's done for me, hey, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for 
for saving me. I had to sit in that seat, but I said, I can't leave this place tonight without giving glory to the King of Kings. I came here the last weekend and I sat in that chair and Pastor Moses said, if you do not have, the Lord said, if you don't have faith, don't come. Don't come. I need it to be made whole in my mind. But I stand here right now with the doctor's report. They told me that I had extra fluid around my baby. They were telling me that all these different things are going on and oh, you have fluid and oh, you're, you're, you're looking like you're expecting and you're cause the baby's coming sooner. But the doctor's report says it's not found right here in black and white. Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord. The report of the Lord says so. You give him praise in this house tonight. Oh God, I glorify your name, oh God. Oh God, you are the God. You are Jehovah Rapha. He will heal you. He will do everything that he has said he will do. His promises are true. They are yes and amen. Believe, 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 believe. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody, love on God. Love on him, love on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all know how pastor talk about second service. Y'all about to start another one in here. We already in second service. Hallelujah. God is so good. You know, one may ask, why are these healings going forth? Have you asked why, Lord? Why are you healing us now? And just a little while ago, the Lord spoke to us that we got to be healed first in order to receive the blessing that he has for us. So this healing just ain't for right now. It's so that you can have the strength to hold and to lift back up to him the blessing that he has for you. Oh, come on, somebody. See, you got your arms got to be strengthened in order to lift back up to him. Bye bye, God. You have done it. You have done it. So, come on, you got to give God praise. You got to give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 I'm excited. You do not want to miss these meetings. You don't want to miss them. The Lord, see, the Lord is merciful. He's so merciful. He delights in us. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. I give God praise in advance now because the man of God ministered to me since we given testimonies. He said, look, and my wife knows this, you're one that is receptive to instruction. I'm the type, Lord, how you want to do this? I want to do this but I submit this before you. I want to hear your voice in all that I do. My wife know I'm, I'm pretty calculated. And as the word of God went forth concerning me because I had been experiencing just lightheadedness and, and dizziness in my body, I'm like, Lord, what do I need to do different? As the word of God came forth, look, son, what I was hearing ain't nothing you got to do because it's just by my word that these things are done. You know, when you get the word, it takes such weight off of you because the world has, has placed such, uh, uh, we feel like we got to be in the way. We feel like we always got to do something in order to get, but when we catch a revelation, the Lord just want to love on us. He want to bless us just cause. I serve a just cause God. And I give God praise because even while with the children, I was experiencing that lightheadedness, but as the man of God ministered to me, I felt that thing going away. And I give God praise for the joy that he set before me, for the joy that he set before us to press into the goodness of God. Let's give the Lord another shout of praise. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Mm. I, I was sitting back there contemplating whether to come up, but Pastor Moses, a while back when we were in the house, you were saying that the Lord would, it, it's, it was going to be a gradual healing process with some things that have been going on in my body. And that's why each time I've been coming up for healing. But when I came up today, whatever I've been dealing with here in this area for years, every time I come up, it's like it's slowly, slowly going away. And I said, you know what? Let me just go up here and give that a shot cut out of the Give that report because it's by faith. When we step out by faith, the completeness of the healing of God will come. So I'm here to tell you, I praise you and I thank you, Father, for my healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> if you help us with the offering slide, thank you, sis. The man of God was just ministering. What is your posture now? Giving God praise now for what he's already done. When he sees that praise going for, ah, I see my children. Ah, I got to do something about this. I want to do this for them. Let us stay in the posture of praise. The tithes and offerings are on the screen. Let's give in our worship. And as we're giving, to our family online. You'll see the details here. You can give at communion.house slash give. We have the church center app, our cash app, dollar sign, communion house, and even our PayPal at communion house. I want to remind us of this scripture as we're in worship and giving that the Lord has moved mightily in our midst. Again, the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. It goes on to say, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Let us give in our receiving of the ones that the Lord has set before us. Let us be renewed in our giving. Let us be renewed in what the Lord has placed before us because we know that the Lord is coming and his reward is with him. And let us not be found wanting in this area. So allow the Holy Spirit to search you, to search you in your service, to search you in your giving toward this house that has been such a blessing to all of us. Many of us have the testimony, especially myself, that our walk has grown, mine and my wife now, our walk has grown by leaps and bounds since coming in contact with the man and woman of God of this house. You know, as much as they pour into us, let us pour into this ministry. Let us be renewed, okay? Let us be renewed in seeking the Lord. How should I be positioned in this house? How should I be positioned in my service, in my giving? Lord, we give you praise for indeed you own the cattle on a thousand hills. All the silver is yours, all the gold, all the mountains, oh God. For Lord, you set up kings and you take them down, oh God. Everything is in your hand. Father, we thank you for the seeds that you have given us, O oh God. And from these seeds, from the increase of our crops and our flocks, O oh God, we give back unto you the tenth part. We're renewed in this, O oh God, for your word declares to test you in this tenth and see if you will not open the flood houses, the store gates of heaven, O oh God, over us and that we have not room enough to receive that blessing. Father, we remind you of your word and we thank you for this heart. For Lord, indeed, you bless the cheerful giver. Lord, look upon these seeds, look upon these offerings, and let them be pleasing in your sight as we lift them up to you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another shout of praise. This live stream, don't forget, will be available tomorrow by 6 p.m. And we'll be back at it Tuesday, 6.30, Family Dinner and Teaching Tuesday. Please come, fellowship with us, love on us. 
and uh, let's just re remain, okay, in the oil that the Lord has set before us. Father, we give you praise. We thank you again for coming to meet with us tonight. All glory and honor belong to you. Amen and amen. amen. Everyone have a blessed night.